Assalamualaikum and good morning to all. U.S. Foreign Secretary Sir James is gone back. from media the feedback which I had received is that he has asked for double efforts from Pakistan to curb terrorism to do more secure the interests of the United States of America and Pakistan as well here in this region. In 1953-54 Pakistan was entered defense alliances, namely CENTO and CETO. So it's an age-long partnership between USA and Pakistan. The statistics which, which are available on the internet communicated to me through media channels that so far 45 billion dollars are being poured in as aid to Pakistan and the interesting factor is that still Pakistan's economy is not showing any signs of improvement or uh, <clears throat> very little welfare uh, impact of that aid is being visible here in Pakistan. <clears throat> As I had said earlier that United States was making global alliances soon after the Second World War when Soviets had entered in Eastern Europe and had installed communist governments there on gunpoint. So the American policy was a policy of containment of communist expansion around the globe. And CENTO and CETO was an effort to build defenses against communist expansion in South and Southeast Asia and Pakistan became part of it. So the Cold War was going on between Soviet bloc countries, mostly communists except India. India was not a communist country but was a partner of Soviet Union in many ways they were buying all the weapons for Soviet Union from 1947 onwards 
Priya was so near to communist Soviet Union, which is now called Russia. And all its other components are being separated from it now. In 1991, uh, Soviet Union was dismantled, and now we are having 15 independent states. Which came into existence of this member of the Soviet Union. <clears throat> so, in the past, uh, Pakistan had to pay the cost of being an ally of. Uh, United States of America and the West that cost was two major wars in 1965 and 1971 India being Soviet uh, ally had inflicted two major wars on Pakistan. Pakistan was dismembered in 1971. And uh, in 1965, India was humiliated by Pakistanis. So the constant pressure on our eastern border was there and is there still. And then in 1979 with the arrival of the invasion of Soviets in Afghanistan, we were also having a constant pressure from the Western border. So, throughout our history of alliance with the United States of America, we were engaged in wars. In 65, in 1971, India was fighting a proxy war. Soviet communists because Pakistan was ally of the United States of America. The Soviet Union was behind the aggressive designs of India and aggressive actions of India in 1965. The reason behind it was that Cold War was going on between uh, US bloc countries and Soviet bloc countries. And Pakistan was a ally of the United States. So, with the arrival of Soviets here in Afghanistan as invaders, Pakistan was also engaged in its western border as well. That was the price of alliance which Pakistan had to pay. And still uh, during the past decade or so, we have lost more than uh, 70,000 people 
in subversive activities for civilians, armed forces, men and officers also mar martyred. And the pressure is still there. So when uh, US leadership fails to understand all this and start uh, blaming or pressurizing Pakistan, then uh, it becomes really difficult to carry on <clears throat> that relationship. The alliance relationship with the United States of America with popular support of the people. Of course, those uh, who are at the helm of the games, they always prefer to be in the US camp. As we all know, that, uh, in the unipolar world, uh, USA is ruling the world. No Soviet in China it is a big power. Cannot compete militarily with the United States of America to be an equal power. Very little communism is left in the world in China and in North Korea. It is still there. Cuba is now warming up with the United States of America. So, what we have to uh, understand is that prevailing fascist and Nazi ideologies in Europe, which were dictatorial in nature, after uh, making alliance with Japan, had started Second World War. America was attacked by Japanese U-boat, Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor attack. was the consequence of the prevailing fascist and Nazi ideologies in Germany and Italy. And the alliance with Japan so we have to keep that in mind that the tutorial setups, dictatorial mindsets, dictatorial ideologies like communism, fascism, Nazism, they were always a threat to world peace. Soviet communism was imposed on Eastern Europe through the barrel of the gun of Soviet Union, till West Germany. Then Soviets had tried to install communist regime in Afghanistan after it, invading it in 1979. Nazi and fascists of Germany and Italy, they had started Second World War in alliance with Japan. And USA was attacked by Japanese U boats. So <clears throat> during Second World War, so USA was finally dragged into Second World War. Now, some uh, people <clears throat> in the United States of 
they are unable to grasp that in India. Fascism, combination of fascism and Nazi is a conglomeration of these both ideologies is represented as democracy before the people. And if you carefully look into the situation of India, you will come to know that. There is no rule of law. There is hell of discrimination within it. The true essence of democracy is missing, though their constitution that is all right. <clears throat> but the practices of their politicians are fascist and dictatorial. Well, today here in Pakistan, we are facing difficult situation by spreading education in our uh, 75% of area. It consists of all villages and is a property of students. Students there to resist education. Why? Because Socialists had exploited, especially Chinese communists had helped to create a political party here in Pakistan. Who was uh, the pa uh, that party was responsible for land reforms here? Though after the imposition of implementation of 1973 constitution of property rights of everyone was guaranteed and government was having no right to take away the lands of anyone but then <clears throat> that uh, usual dictatorial ways of doing things in the name of democracy. They had created the situation that our feudals are allergic with us, educated and education. <clears throat> that was started from India. Socialist Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, he had initiated land reforms. Though their constitution also provides uh, property protection to all its citizens. So whatsoever is written in our constitutions, the practices of our leaders were contrary to it. Why it was so? Because uh, Communist China was at our borders, <clears throat> they are at the borders of India as well. And, uh, while having such a huge neighbor, uh, huge Communist neighbor, it was uh, really difficult for certain people to resist the temptation of getting financial aid from Communist China and Soviet Union as well while farming political parties promoting communist agenda here in the name of religion, democracy. The West has totally uh, misunderstood the on, on the ground situation here in Pakistan. 
We don't have democracy in any way. Our constitutions in India and Pakistan are uh, democratic. They do promote uh, republicanism, but these constitutions were never being implemented. India was ruled by Madam Indra Gandhi for a long period of time through emergency measures. And this, the rights of the people were suspended for a long period of time. Pakistan had witnessed many martial laws. Even uh, elected leaders were unable to implement the constitution in any way in both countries. The, the consequence is that when the people are deprived of their ri uh, rights and uh, the rule of law is not there, which, which, is, which can be the outcome of true democracy. Because transparency is only possible when you are having free press you are having democracy, when you are having true democracy, and uh, when you are having uh, political parties organized on democratic principles. Now, demand of Sir James to uh, double the efforts from Pakistan that also needs more evaluation of the on the ground situation here. In absence of true democracy in Pakistan, and keeping the fact in view that Pakistan was engaged in wars on its eastern border and its western border as well since long, we are having a war torn economy. Then. Militancy is at rise because of the wars. The war culture has been developed in neighboring Afghanistan where American presence is there along with its Western allies and the UN umbrella. Afghan history depicts that when there is no foreign invader to fight in Afghanistan, they fight among themselves. We are having feudal lords, Afghans are having war lords. The war culture has been developed in Afghanistan. Then increased militancy has to be met to restore rule of law both in Pakistan and Afghanistan as well and in India as well because militancy was the outcome or war culture was the outcome of Indian efforts the fascist efforts to conquer Pakistan by crossing international border in 1965 and 1971, they have a lot of uh, war veterans and they, uh, they, they are not treated uh, by psychologists. Indian Army soldiers engaged in various 
unlimited two unlimited wars and various limited wars with Pakistan. Those killing machines were not getting any psychological treatment before becoming a part of Indian society. Same is the case with Pakistani war veterans. And what to think about Afghanistan because uh, they're all warriors. In one way or another. So Pakistan can double the efforts and can do more. But that so uh, but U.S. Uh, authorities uh, can do more than that by uh, promoting true democracy in India and Pakistan and Afghanistan as well, and by giving them expertise to handle their war veterans, killing machines, coming back home, and become part of the society. Now, in Pakistan, they are allowed to form political parties as well. So, one had stayed on sit in near Islamabad recently. He is a leader of us. Registered political party. These guys were too, so tough that you know, they had defeated police force. When these guys had tried to disperse. And finally, the army had called in. We had to go with it. Finally, it was peacefully. Did you see? We increased militancy, increased uh, efforts to use religion uh, as a car to promote fascist and Nazi practices. These are common practices here in Pakistan. <clears throat> so I think that um, grand strategy on the part of the United States of America is needed. And on part of its uh, Western allies is needed to bring out subcontinent from this situation. Europe is now peaceful because there is no fascism or Nazism. Even in Eastern Europe, now we are having democracies. Soviet Union has been dismantled. But in South Asia, Communist China exists in Far East. North Korea is still there. And they do have their influences besides uh, Nazis and fascists. They also have groups here, both in Pakistan and India as well. But their roots in India are much stronger than Pakistan. So the grand strategy on part of the United States of America and its Western life is needed to uh, improve the situation here. And uh, 
once the situation, economic situation, has been improved, political stability is here, true democracy prevails here, then there is a fair chance that uh, efforts of Pakistan can meet success to promote sound and U.S. interest in this region. That is not an easy job. I mean, keeping the on ground situation in view. But I know that uh, expertise and know how it exists in the United States of America and in the Western world. Uh, if utilized properly, we came into a situation here, both in Pakistan and Afghanistan as well. Thorough research is needed regarding, regarding Afghanistan and uh, on the basis of the real data then one can come up with certain recommendations regarding the handling of the situation. So I think a lot of hard work on part of the United States of America and its Western allies is required. Uh, because while sitting In the United States of America, in Britain, through data received from in, uh, indirect sources, some analysts of think tanks will do advise the policy maker in Britain and in the USA. That advice is having a little value. And that can lead uh, USA and allies into more trouble in Afghanistan. There shall be a strategy based on realism. By this way, we can move forward. We Pakistanis can do more. to improve the situation here. Once we are in a position to do that, in absence of able leadership, in absence of quality education in America, educational institutions, in absence of efficient governance structure, We cannot help anyone. That will be very unrealistic to promise the things if we cannot deliver. We are having only one organized institution, and that is Pakistan Armed Forces. Obviously, a half a million people is a part of Pakistan Armed Forces. They, are, they have sacrificed a lot by containing Soviets from moving further towards Pakistan while they were in Afghanistan. The help from the United States of America was there. Now what we need is stability, economic and political stability through democracy so that real talent can come up in an egalitarian setup and provide leadership to Pakistan which can promote the real interest of Pakistan in the United States as well. 
as an age-long ally of the United States. I wish all the best. Good luck.